heroic Heracles and the Hyperboles. Once there was a heroic man called Heracles. He lived in a towering brown castle surrounded by lush green grass. When his schoolmaster told him never to touch a horrible alcoholic drink, he kept his promise for a while, but then went to an extravagant party. He felt silly that he had to drink fruit juice. He then took some unique beer and got so drunk he started punching in all directions. When the beer had worn out, all the people lay dead. For his crime, King Ulysses sent Heracles to complete dangerous labors. This was his thirteenth. The terrifying thirteenth labor was to fight the deadliest beast in the universe, named the Hycropolis. He lived in the burning heat of a cave on the Rocky Mountains, so he set off towards a highly eruptive volcano, which was near a crystal clear brook. Descending from the bright sky as hot as an oven came a shimmering silver figure. As she landed, Heracles realized that she was the elegant goddess Athena. She was wearing a long flowing silver dress as bright as the stars. She came floating down on her glistening shoes with Pegasus wings on her silver sparkling sandals. She landed daintily and swiftly. She handed him a sword of honor. This, the shield and these sandals will help you on your journey. With that, she handed Heracles the sword, shield, and the sandals. And then she fluttered as lightly as a butterfly up and up until he could no longer see her. Suddenly, he heard a crash as loud as cymbals. Then he gasped. A towering, looming figure stood one meter above him. It roared in a frightening voice. It said its name was the Hyacropolis. Heracles was so frightened that he felt faint. The horrible beast was bright red and brown. It had the head of a lion and razor sharp teeth. Its tail was also like the lion. Furthermore, he had some deadly python snakes to team up with him. All of a sudden, he started backing Heracles up onto the other side of the hill. With his heart thumping like a drum, the Hypocrates grabbed Heracles, Heracles' sweaty toga and swung him rapidly round and round until he gallops, collapsed on a silver rock. Then he jumped on the top on top of a wavy rock and floated on the top of the monster's head and spliced his head clean off. He fell to the ground with a thump. Triumphantly, Heracles went back to the elegant castle where the villagers welcomed him home. Heracles had finally been forgiven. Three years later, Heracles had another glass of wine.